Paul, what could you tell us from uh, uh, from the series of events that took place that led to Debbie Wasserman Schultz's ouster? Well, I mean, clearly the, the emails show that the political primary process of the Democrats was totally rigged from the beginning. The superdelegates and the rules and the dates of the primary of the debates all were set up for, for Hillary Clinton. So it questions the legitimacy of her nomination in some respects. Uh, uh, but more importantly, you know, the, the DNC hacking put the DNC at risk. Just think about the server that was unprotected sitting in Hillary Clinton's uh, closet in her home. You know, that put American national security at risk. You can be darn sure, as Mr. Trump has said, that ha was hacked by many foreign countries uh, because they, they were trailing her. So it raises, once again, one of the core issues of this campaign that Hillary Clinton put the American national security at risk and her cover up, well, you know, which frankly was not very effective, even though it got her off of the, off of the hook with the Obama administration, you know, it will be back in play again. You got to think the protections were better on the DNC computers than they were on Hillary Clinton's personal computers, and WikiLeaks penetrated. What does that make you think we can expect over the next few months of the 30,000 emails that were deleted from Hillary Clinton's server? Well, I mean, one of the concerns you have to have is what we don't end up ever finding out that these foreign countries might have on national security secrets. I mean, the point is, the point that Mr. Trump has been making is true. She put our national security at risk. This DNC. Uh, hacking ironically exposes it even more so for its vulnerabilities. If people are worried about somebody's honesty and integrity and then they find out there's even more colluding underneath the wire that nobody knowed about, this time with the DNC and Hillary Clinton, what does that say about her overall candidacy? Well, it goes again to her, credit, her candor and her credibility and her honesty. I mean, she was colluding with Debbie Wasserman Schultz and the Democratic National Committee the whole time. The whole process was rigged in her behalf. Once again, even her nomination is a result of a rigged system and a dishonest uh, strategy. How hard is it to go ahead with a four-day convention without the CEO of that convention? Well, ironically, the, you know, the media was saying for the last month the Republican convention was in chaos. The Republican convention delegates were, were, were not you know, coming together. Uh, the, and here, the, 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 and none of that was true. But here, on the first day of the Democratic convention, they don't have a chairman. Uh, the system has been proven to be exposed to be rigged. You've got, you've got delegates who are supporting uh, Senator Sanders uh, outraged at the, at the process. Uh, so it's going to be a tumultuous week. And it's certainly not going to help her, Senator, uh, Secretary of State Clinton. You're on the campaign side. I get it. She's the CEO of the party. But in these emails that are released, there's collaborating and collusion with the CFO, as well as the communication director, to bring up things about Bernie Sanders' religion, to pretend as if his campaign was in chaos when it wasn't. Is she the only one who should pay the price? Well, I mean, there's going to have to be a wholesale investigation. I'm sure Senator Sanders will call for that. Uh, and you know, let's not forget the White House. I mean, uh, this was Obama's uh, the, the, uh, the DNC. He's the president. He's the leader of the Democratic Party. You can be sure that what she was, what, what uh, Wasserman Schultz was doing, was being coordinated with the White House as well. That's so interesting because she is now Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the honorary chairman of Hillary Clinton's 50-state strategy to win. So now she's out of the DNC at the end of this week, but she goes right over to Hillary Clinton. How do you read that? Well, it's, it's all consistent with the pre-cooked game, you know, the corruption inside of the Democratic rig system. Uh, and, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it, she, this will be a problem that she's going to have through the whole campaign now because the legitimacy of her nomination is now called into question. All right, Paul, there's three phases to it. You came in not from the very beginning, but they're one of the most important elements. Get the nomination, you did it. Get to the convention, you achieved it. Now, what is the strategy for the final sprint to November? Well, Mr. Trump, starting tomorrow, uh, is going to be out campaigning on, and framing the election for what, it, what he said in his convention speech on Thursday night. The stakes of the election are very clear. It's change versus the establishment that's been in power for 25 years. Mr. Trump is the outsider. He's the one who's talking about the issues that need to, uh, that, that, that need to be uh, changed. Secretary Clinton is the establishment. She's been part of it. She's been part of the failed Obama foreign policy. You know, the, the issues that are gripping the world today with the rise of ISIS, the Middle East instability, China expanding into the South China Sea, all of those issues started on her watch. 
Uh, and, and so we're going to be talking about those issues. Uh, additionally, on the, on, as Mr. Trump said, in creating borders that will protect our country and, and changing the economy so that, you know, that the, the middle class people are given the opportunity to actually be able to afford their lives. These are issues he'll be talking about, and she is directly uh, you know, on the hook for having been a part of the last seven and a half years. Two more questions. One, do you think that uh, Donald Trump's freelancing uh, mini press conference the day after the convention, when he was truly happy, we talked about Ted Cruz and everything else, took away from the convention success? No. I, I mean, the, the convention was an overwhelming success. Uh, he was responding to something he was asked regarding uh, Senator Cruz. Uh, you know, the party came together at the convention. It's together today more so than ever. It's the Democrats that are in disarray. Governor Kasich says he has not closed the door to endorsing Donald Trump, but not now. Your reaction? Well, Donald Trump invited every one of the presidential candidates to speak at the convention without any conditions because he felt they earned the right. Uh, I'm glad to hear that Governor Kasich is, uh, is, is still thinking about it. Uh, you know, I wish he had uh, thought about it more before the convention. But Donald Trump is running an open door campaign uh, to all the Republicans and all Democrats and independents, too. Well, you know, things got to improve when it comes to minorities and money. What's your attack plan? Uh, well, the money, you know, Donald Trump has ran his campaign on his own money. He didn't reach out to Wall Street like Hillary Clinton did. Uh, but now we're working with the RNC and raising money for, uh, for the RNC, and we'll be running as a ticket, uh, you know, with members, members of the Senate and the, well, the whole Republican ticket. Minorities. What do you plan to do to reach out and define your campaign differently than it's being defined right now? We had several speeches that we were going to do in the last month uh, that were direct outreaches to minorities, uh, but they were canceled because of some of the tragedies that happened both in Dallas and Baton Rouge. Uh, so we've got some things that Mr. Trump will be talking about. But he raised those issues at his convention when he, uh, his speech, when he talked about leveling the playing field, when he talked about uh, you know, creating jobs, when he talked about uh, you know, trying to uh, right. create jobs that people can, that'll be meaningful jobs with meaningful pay. So we'll be exploring those issues in the communities across the country, but also in minority communities as well. Paul Manafort, thanks so much.